What's going on, everybody? This is your man, Tech G, back with another class. And today we are going to be talking about units of measure. So in this video, we're going to be learning about um, things such as storage units, throughput units, and processing speed. So let's go ahead and get on with the video. All right, storage units. So storage units um, measure the capacity of permanent storage, including magnetic, optical, and flash memory drives. Um, Read-only memory, known as ROM, and random access memory, known as RAM, which is temporary storage. Um, storage units use two number systems, the decimal powers of 10 and the decimal powers of 2. Let's talk about <clears throat> bits, bit and bits, bit and bits. So a bit is short for binary digit, and it is the smallest unit of measure used to quantify computer data. It contains a single binary value of base two, that of a zero or a one. When we get to bits, bits is the uh, plural form of bit. And that refers to the size of the internal registry in a CPU processor. A nibble is equal to four bits. A 32-bit processor can process information in 32-bit wide elements and can also access memory addresses up to 2 to the 32, which comes out to be that very big number, or 4 gigabytes. A 64-bit processor can um, process information in 64-bit wide elements and can also access memory addresses up to 2 to the 64th power bytes or 18 zeta bytes. So that is what bit and bits are. Our next value we're going to discuss is the byte. Um, a byte is a data measurement unit that contains eight bits or a series of eight zeros and ones. A single byte can be used to represent two to the eighth or 256 different values. Also, a single character in plain text file requires a byte to store it. Multiples of bytes are used by all larger units of measure. Our next measurement is going to be the kilobyte. A kilobyte abbreviated with the letter K or KB, is the smallest unit of measure greater than the byte. It precedes the megabyte, which contains 1 million bytes, but the kilobyte is 1,000 bytes when expressed in decimal powers of 10 and 1,024 bytes when expressed in decimal powers of 2. Next, we're going to talk about is the megabyte. The megabyte, ladies and gentlemen. So a megabyte is equal to 1000 kilobytes and precedes the gigabit, the gigabyte unit of measurement. Uh, depending on the, the, the device, the megabyte is either 1,048,576 bytes when expressed in powers of uh, two, which comes out to be 1024 kilobytes in powers of two. Or it is 1 million bytes when expressed in powers of 10. Uh, RAM, which is system memory or cache memory, is often expressed using the powers of 2 decimal method, whereas the rated capacity of storage drives and media is expressed using the decimal measurements. To calculate the binary megabyte value from a value in millions, you simply divide the capacity in bytes by 1 million 48,576. So that is how you would calculate the binary megabyte value. Next, we're going to talk about gigabytes. Gigabytes. <clears throat> so a gigabyte is equal to 1,000 megabytes, and it precedes the terabyte unit of measurement. Uh, depending upon the device, a gigabyte is either 1,073,741,824 bytes or 1,024 megabytes when expressed in powers of two. Or it is 1 billion bytes when expressed in powers of 10. 
So to calculate the binary gigabyte value from a value in billions, you simply divide the capacity in bytes by that very large number right there. Next, we're going to talk about terabyte. A terabyte is equal to 1,000 gigabytes, and it precedes the petabyte unit of measurement. A terabyte is either that really big number written in bytes or 1,024 gigabytes when you express it in powers of two, or it is that really big number written in bytes when you express it in powers of 10. Storage vendors generally measure their drives using powers of 10 capacities, while operating systems use powers of two, which is binary measurements. And we're going to talk about some petabytes, petabytes. So a petabyte is equal to 1000 terabytes. Now, depending upon the uh, device, a petabyte is either this really big number in bytes or it is 1024 terabytes when you express it in powers of two. Now, if you want to express it in powers of 10, it'll be that really big number right there. Petabyte size drive arrays, they are mostly used when it comes to cloud storage and backup systems. So here is a, um, a capacity comparison chart right here. So everything I just read to you, I'll put it in this nice, pretty little diagram for you right here for future reference. All right, so let's talk about some throughput uh, units. Uh, throughput units are used to measure the speed at which data is transferred between endpoints such as from the internet to, broad, to a broadband modem or from a hard drive to a computer. Throughput units use powers of 10 numbering systems. So let's talk about some of these throughput units. We have bits per second. Bits per second is a common measure of data speed for computer modems and transmission carriers. As the term implies, the speed in bits per second is equal to the number of bits transmitted or received each second. Also worth noting is that bits per second was mainly used to measure the speeds of early dial-up modems or analog modems from back in the day. The next unit of measure when it comes to throughput is the kilobit per second. One kilobit per second equals 1,000 bits per second. Kilobits per second is primarily used to measure the speeds of low performance DSL internet connections. So anything ranging from 256 to 768 kilobits per second. Next we have the megabit per second. One megabit per second equals 1,000 kilobits per second. Megabits per second is widely used to measure the speeds of high-speed and broadband internet connections, LAN connections, and in and output devices such as USB 1.1, USB 2.0, and FireWire. This is stuff you'll learn about later on in this class. Gigabytes per sec, gigabits per second, I should say is the next unit of measure. One gigabit per second equals one megabit per second. Gigabits per second uh, measurements are primarily used to express the speeds of very fast internet and LAN connections. Um, when you're talking about giga ethernet or 10 gigabit ethernet and the speed of high, uh, high performance device interconnects such as USB 3.1, generation one, USB 3.1, Generation 2 and SATA Revisions 3. We'll talk about that stuff later on in this course. And the next um, throughput measurement is terabytes per second. Not terabits, but terabytes. One terabyte per second, per second equals 1,000 gigabits per second. Terabytes per second they are primarily used to measure speeds of internet connections between countries and regions. <clears throat> Next, we're going to talk about processing speeds, processing speeds. So processing speeds, which are also known as clock speeds, is the speed at which a microprocessor executes instructions. That is the number of cycles a processor can perform 
per second. The processing speed is controlled by a crystal oscillator clock chip on the motherboard. Uh, each combination of a pulse and reset is a clock speed. So if you look at the little pretty picture over here, you look at the top where it says clock speed from where it uh, rises at the top to where it rises at the beginning over there. That is one clock cycle, ladies and gentlemen. All right. So when we're talking about clock speeds, the lowest speed that we measure in is the megahertz. A megahertz is equal to. 1 million cycles per second or 1,000 kilohertz. Uh, megahertz is also used to measure the input output bus clock rate used by memory modules. You'll learn about that stuff later on. Next, we have gigahertz. <clears throat> A gigahertz is equal to 1 billion cycles per second or 1000 megahertz almost all processors used in pcs manufactured within the last decade run at speeds exceeding one gigahertz all right so that was a pretty short class so let's go ahead and get into some of this check on learning First question is, which of the following statements is incorrect? Would it be 1,024 kilobytes equals one megabyte? Would it be 1,024 megabytes equals one petabyte? Would it be 1,024 gigabytes equals one terabyte? Or would it be one terabyte equals 1,024 megabytes times 1,024 megabytes? So which one of these statements is incorrect? The answer is 1,024 megabytes does not equal one petabyte. The correct answer would be 1,024 terabytes equals one petabyte. Next question, <clears throat> which of the following accurately lists measurements in order from largest to smallest? Would it be megabyte, kilobyte, petabyte, petabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, petabyte, gigabyte, megabyte, or would it be gigabyte, kilobyte, megabyte? Which of the following lists the measurements in order from largest to smallest? The correct answer is <clears throat> petabytes, gigabytes, and megabytes. That is from largest to smallest, ladies and gentlemen. And last question. Which of the following is a correct statement about clock speed and CPU performance? Would it be any processor with a faster clock speed than another performs tasks more quickly? Would it be internal design has no effect on CPU performance? Would it be a processor's clock speed is one of the factors determining CPU performance? Or would it be a processor's clock speed is controlled by the real time clock speed? Got my camera in the way clock chip on the motherboard. So which one of these will be the correct answer when it comes to uh, which, which one of these statements is correct about clock speed and CPU performance? The correct answer is a processor's clock speed is one of the factors determining CPU performance. So when you guys are out there buying computers and you look at the box, oftentimes they'll advertise the clock speed of a CPU saying that this clock speed, it goes this fast or it goes this fast. It can process this many instructions per second. They'll have that stuff big as day on the box to, uh, to attract you to it, to make you want to buy that machine. All right. So here's a summary of what we just went over. We talked about storage units. We talked about throughput units and we talked about processing speeds. So if you want to get more information on this, head on over to my website, technologyg.com, where you can look up this information and study it so that you can be better prepared to take your 
IT Fundamentals Certification Exam. So until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.